All right, guys, welcome back to uh, part two of the 18650 and 2170 battery design crash course. So today we're going to be doing cell holders, so custom cell holders. So Onshape is the program that we're using. So we're going to go to that, onshape.com. Uh, if you didn't see, check out the first video where I show you how to um, get started on Onshape. Very simple. So we're going to open Onshape and we're going to cr create document. And I'm going to say cell holders. That's a really uh, good thing to be able to design because if you're building your own batteries and you have even a very basic 3D printer, um, having custom cell holders is, you know, awesome for having, you know, space confined or space restraints and everything instead of buying cell holders off Amazon and chopping them up. Um, so we're going to start off um, by clicking on the front plane, clicking sketch. Um, let me, uh, I already did that, but let me do that again. So clicking the front plane, pressing sketch, and then going over here to the top right and pressing front just so that it gives us a uh, angle that's looking directly at the plane or normal to the plane. So we're going to start with a circle. So either press C on the keyboard or click that circle, put it in the middle. We're going to dimension the circle. So press D on your keyboard. And we're going to, because we're doing cell holders, we're going to dimension it at 18.75. This is going to give some clearance for uh, the cells to fit in. And they'll, that's a good number. It'll kind of fit in nicely. Uh, another thing that you want to consider is I'm going to be 3D printing this. Uh, the nozzles on my 3D printer are 0 0.5 millimeters. So um, I'm going to do a one millimeter wall. So it's going to be two, uh, two layers, basically. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. If you have a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle on your printer, which is super common, you might want to do 0 0.8 millimeter um, spacing or, or walls. So that'll make sense in a moment. So next thing we're going to do is draw a line, another line, you press escape, press L, press escape. And so we're going to make both these lines equally dimensioned. So we click on both of them, press E for equal. And then we're going to make them both construction lines. So click on them both again, press Q for construction, or you can click up here for construction. We're going to dimension this construction line. This is going to be our spacing. And so this will allow us to change all of the spacing with one click. We're going to make this for me, it's 19.75 because one millimeter spacing, which is going to be two of my 0 0.5 millimeter um, nozzle widths. Uh, so they will be just touching. Okay, so now that we have that line there, we're going to go up here to linear pattern, click on the circle, and in my case, um, it's going to be a 13S7P battery. So we're going to go where it says 3X here, double click, press 13, enter, where it says 1, double click, press 7, enter, and enter. Click off, and so you can see it will default to giving a spacing of 25. So we're going to remove those because we have our construction line. So right click, delete dimension, right click, delete dimension, then drag this circle. See how all of the circles are moving in unison. We'll drag it to the end of our construction line. They all go black. Then we're going to drag this one to the end of our construction line. They all go black. Okay, so now we have our cell plot. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this sketch and come back to it. Press check mark. We're going to do another sketch on the front plane. And this way we can just use this sketch whenever we want. We can bring it back up. So we're going to go to front plane, sketch, and we're going to click on sketch one, copy sketch, and we're going to paste it. One, two, and we're going to we're going to make these points coincident. So there is coincident. And bam. So we've got our sketch again that we're able to use. So now we're going to um, make our perimeter for our cell holders. So that's going to look like this. So one, two, three, four. Um, we're going to offset all of these by one millimeter. So we can only do one at a time. So we'll press offset, select this one. Um, and where it says five, press one. 
Same thing here. Enter. One. Enter. One. It might be slightly delayed because it is an, a browser. And finally, one. Okay. Next step, the lines that we just made, we're going to make them all construction lines. One, two, three, four. Click on all four of those. Press Q. Good. And now we're going to press an L for a line. We're going to draw a line going around. So I am scrolling in and out for, for Zoom. Their line. Two. Line, press L. Escape to escape and then final line Come down here. Escape. Okay, so these are we make a tangent. So if we click on the line and this circle, and then we go up here to tangent, you can also just press T. It's going to make the line tangent, and you can see that it becomes black. Do the same thing here. Let's click that line and that line, press tangent or T. Uh, this one, we also want it to be vertical because when we first drew it, it wasn't vertical. This one and this one, tangent, press T. See, it goes black, and then this one is already vertical. And then this circle, T for tangent, goes black. Okay, so we've got a outline. Last thing we need to do is draw these arcs. And the reason I offset these circles um, instead of just drawing a big box is because it's going to give a equal wall width, uh, wall thickness all around the edge. So we're going to do three point arc. One, two, three. See that it became black, which means it's fully defined. Do the same here. One, two, three. And it's black. One, two, three. Black. Last one. One, two, three. Black. And you can see now it's highlighted. So this whole thing is now a closed surface. So we're going to do our first part of the cell holders. We're going to go up to extrude. And we're going to, so it automatically guesses and it's guessing right. We're going to give our depth, we're going to say 8.5 or let's say 9.5 millimeters. OK. And if we look, if we push in our scroll wheel, scroll the side, it's got some thickness to it. And now we're going to put our end stops. So we're going to click on this face. We're going to go up to Sketch. And we're going to press Front so that we are looking directly at the plane. We're going to go back to our initial sketch. We're going to click it, right click, copy, and then we're going to paste it. And we're going to take this dot, which is our origin dot. Let's escape the deselect. We're going to take our origin dot and this origin dot. And then we're going to make them coincident. So click here. You can also press I. And it places it right back in. So now for this one, we're going to actually change the circle. Uh, the diameter of the circle to be a little bit smaller so that it is an end stop. So we're going to make it, uh, let's do 12. Enter. And you can see it makes it quite a bit smaller. And we're select tangent connected edges. OK, there we go. That's what we want to do. Select tangent connected edges. Use. All goes black, and now we're going to extrude this. And we're going to extrude this only 0 0.5 millimeters. Five. We want to merge with all so that it all stays as one part. Okay. 
So there we go. That's all there is to it for these custom cell holders. So we did a 0 0.5 millimeter bottom, and that's going to keep the cells in line and still give us plenty of space to spot weld or to uh, connect our bottom. So that is our cell holder. Now let's see how do we put this into a 3D printing program like Cura. So if we go over here to part, on the bottom left, right click it, export, STL already is selected, press export, and it pops up. We're going to drag that into Cura or whatever 3D slicer that you use. And I'm going to print this on my snap maker. Rotate it so that it's flat. And there you go. We have a cell holder. Now, cell holders don't need to have a ton of strength, so you don't need to print them. Uh, you don't need to print them full uh, density or anything like that. Usually, I do pretty thin, one wall, maybe two walls, and density can be something like twenty percent. And slice that. That should be fairly quick print. Also very easy to do. So when the edges are rounded like this, then it prints much easier on a 3D printer. If you have sharp edges, then they will peel off on a 3D printer. So that gives us our nice snug fit. And I hope you like this video. In our next video, uh, we're going to be doing some more advanced stuff, um, like taking an image of an actual bike frame or some kind of frame, and then seeing how much space that we can have and how much battery that we can put into that space. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. Um, check out the next one. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Until next time, guys, thank you for checking this one out. We'll see you soon.